No, I can't, but I can try. The guy who has been left to lead Arturo, Lorenzo, Juanita, who no longer is with us. And then from there I lost track, but I'm gonna try. Neftali. I always get two of them messed up. I do know there's a secret to this. It's one girl, two boys, one girl, two boys, one girl, two boys. That's, that, that helps me. So, Neftali, Lorenzo, Arturo, Juanita, Oldest to youngest and back and forth. Naftali is the first. Um, then Arturo. Then Lorenzo, my dad. Then Juanita. Um, the two that I, I mess up are, are, I don't know why, are Edmundo and Ruben. Naftali, Arturo, Lorenzo, Juanita, Ruben, Edmundo, Sandra, Amad, it's me, Noe, Noe, uh, Gerardo, Guillermo, Virgil, and then Eduardo, which is Edward. Ruben, Noe, I don't know. Gerardo, who is in California. Eddie, who is in Oklahoma. Isidora, who is just in uh, Seattle. And then Mundo, which is in Ohio. Adan, I think I already mentioned it. I want to make sure I don't forget everybody. Uh, William and Eddie, and Eddie. And now, I point here is, where does Noe fit? Then it's Sandra. And then it is Adan. And Noe. Then it is Izzy. And then it is Pino and William and Eddie. I think. Arturo. Arturo. No, I see. Dali. Well, my name is pronounced Neftali, and it's spelled N-E-F-T-A-L-I, and my last name is Seagraves. But I'm going to give you the name that I was born with, uh, uh, that was my, my parents gave me. So that is, um, that will be Maria Neftali Cervantes Reyes. And But now that I'm married, I, I, I added the name Seagraves. And um, my... You want to know my age, mm -hmm. huh? Uh, okay, it's um, I am seventy years, seventy-seven years old. Okay, and I am the uh, eldest of thirteen children. I was born in a nice town, a small town actually. The name of it is Cardenas, C-A-R-D-E-N-S, and that was in the state of San Luis Potosí, Mexico. Every time, because I was the eldest, my mom always said, "You're the you're the older. You have you have responsibilities. You have to make be, be a good example for your little brothers and sisters." And I always felt like, I, "Why better be good? Why better give them a good example?" So that was my mentality growing up. But it was fun too at the same time. So um, it was it was about teaching my brothers and sisters a lot of times how to behave well. When my parents brought us to this country back in 1960. They were 10 of us, 11 of us, and ranges of age from 16 years, I was 16 years old, all the way to a year and a half. So there were a lot of little ones between there. The biggest uh, impact that I saw was when we started coming here to the United States area here in Illinois, we could see the snow outside. 
And so we never knew what snow on at that point. And so we could see the snow on the buildings and things like that. And they said to ourselves, you know, man, there's a lot of salt out here. Oh, it was, it was sort of cool. So we're in this car and they, my mom and dad says, just, just get in the car, we're going someplace. Of course, at that age, that we don't know. I, I didn't know where we were going. He did, they, they just told us, get in the car. So we're driving. I'm, I'm, I'm not driving. My parents are driving. I'm in the back seat. And I don't know what state it was. I think it was maybe Oklahoma or Arkansas or somewhere. It had to be November, December. I think it was December. Pretty sure it was winter because it was getting cold. And I look out the window and I see this white stuff. I've never seen the white stuff. So I was worried, I said, Dad, somebody, somebody is doing laundry and the washing machine is, is spilling over with soap. You, we need to stop and tell them that the, the machine is, they need to stop the laundry machine. Really, oh my, look, there's more. There's all these people, the, the machines, the washing machines, there's suds coming out and it's all over the yard. Dad, stop. You got to tell them the machines are, and, and finally he got tired and he said, no, 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 no. Vamos a parar, so we're going to stop. And we stopped at a gas station, and there was, there was white stuff there. So I, I ran to, oh, God, this, this is so, it's soap. It's got to be soap. So I picked it up, and it was real cold. Whoa. I said, that's not soap, Dad. I'll comprend this. How do you understand? It's like, ah, oh, see, see. It's like, oh, vente el carro. Get back in the car. When I first came, the very first time, uh, we didn't, all of us, not just me, we didn't know any English. It was all, we, all, we just knew Spanish. So uh, when we came to the United States, uh, we came to a little town, uh, we call it Woodstock, Illinois. My sister Naftali, the oldest, she was uh, going to school, learning English and so on. And, uh, and I think it was a Catholic school or something like that. And so we always thought, hey, this is awesome, you know, she teaches a little bit of uh, English, but we didn't have time to learn. When the phone rang, since none of us <laughs> knew English, we would, we would ask for Nathalie, the phone rang, and said, Nathalie, telefono, telefono. And Nathalie would go walk, and it's like, ah, oh, hello. And we were all standing around Nathalie's like, and he said, what are they saying, what are they saying? And, and then she would stand and everybody would be around her and then she would hang up the phone. She says, Le voy a decir que dice. I'm gonna tell you who it was. Everybody sit down. And we're all looking at her, what was that? And so she would explain, oh, it's, somebody's coming to hook up the light or something real simple like that. Like, oh, okay, it's no important. It's like, no, it wasn't, that's not important. My dad, Lorenzo, came to go and went to school and was working more in IT um, at first, but then wanted to become his own entrepreneur and do real estate, so he did that too. I actually did not work for somebody since 1972. I actually said, I'm going to work for myself and I'm going to manage my own finances. We didn't do too good. <laughs> Sometimes I screwed up with the family and all that stuff. But that was what I decided. But you know what I'm doing right now? Uh, all my kids are growing. All my brothers and sisters are growing and having their own lifestyle. And it's all good. And I still buying houses and fixing them. I don't look at that as work. I look at that as something that will keep me busy and happy. So. Every day I go either do something here, there, fix the roof, fix the air conditioner, work here, some friends ask me to come and help and so on. And I'm gonna keep going as long as I can and I'm gonna happily keep on working. So I'm gonna die happy working with a hammer in my hand. <laughs> they were all driven. Um, they all were fighters. I feel like the Reyes family came to America and they wanted to do better. They wanted to do more with their lives. And 
they all wanted to accomplish a lot of things. We are uh, humans and we grew, we grow as humans in different circumstances. I don't know. You like the Dallas Cowboys? I like that. I don't know. You, you like the Bears? It causes trouble. No, the it Bears are good, no? How about that? Was the game no yeah, competition. Yeah, Dallas should be okay. No competition. Noe Reyes is a celebrity in Belvedere, um, and I've come to recognize or I guess know that more so since uh, there's been a platform where people have responded to remembering Noe because he was always everywhere in Belvedere. He was always downtown, he was walking around, you could, and he was very nice to people and he had, um, he oftentimes had a very witty response and a, it's a type of wit that um, not everybody, I guess not everybody would understand or maybe it would maybe it wouldn't be called witty, but it, he always had a entertaining response. Noe is actually, I'm not kidding, but he's probably the most intelligent member of our family. Now he does have a uh, little issue sometimes with reality, and but we love him. He's a, he's he's a good brother. He was well known in Belvedere because he was he had a, he has a good heart. Like I said, he's very sensitive. He has a good heart, and, it, and anything that anybody says, you know, if he doesn't like it or he doesn't um, agree, you know, he, he's going to say something that is going to block it. You know, it be funny with humor and stuff like that. So a lot of people, you know, they, they like that about knowing. I remember growing up, since I am one of the oldest, I actually remember him when he was in high school. And he was always at the Christmas parties. And he really, uh, he really had a great sense of humor. We used to turn down the TV and we'd all make up sentences for like what, what we think they're saying. And we'd just make hilarious like voiceovers for uh, whatever was on TV at the time. Him being a person who was selfless, thought of others, even though he had a difficult time in his life and things that it, um, how he lived and um, what he lived through, I guess. And I'm not really certain all of it either, but it was really, it's really great to have someone that I actually, I actually look up to because of what what he's you know, because of the things he's gone through he's still persevered in great ways and that is the gentle knowing the care and you just see it in his face too and I just love it very proud of him thanks with the state of Illinois for 35 years and I, I was a, um, a, a contractor for the state of Illinois uh, working work with for the um, human resources and the Department of Human Family Services. Eventually I, I, I was asked, I was assigned to work with the Hispanic community when it came to um, families being distressed and when there was a need the Illinois Department of Human Services to come in there and solve the problem. So anyway, I, I was very instrumental in um, guiding the, the Hispanic families to, um, um, to improve their lives. Uh, I did, and I'm very proud of it. That I, and so I retire now, but I am very proud to say that I was in that field for a while. If you are asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would simply say to you, well, you're already a human. All you have to do is grow up to be a good human because there's very little competition there. It's very easy to be a good human and you're going to be happier because it's for your own health and it's for everybody else's benefit too, that's yours. And so that's what I could say. Our family is growing and learned to adapt to this area wherever we are adapted. And so we hopefully learned how to be a good human.
Well, that's a career you don't have very much competition in. You could be a human and nobody's gonna compete against you. And where else in the world can you do it in America? Because I don't think that being in another country, you could have been going through all this struggling and still be able to survive. That's the whole reason why they came to the United States. And so that 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 came true to us. So I'm hoping our family is doing that. I always think of our pattern and two boys, one girl, two boys, one girl. So Juanita, I was I was girl and then the two boys, Arturo and Lorenzo, and then there's Juanita. That was the, the second girl. Okay, so Juanita. Because she's the one that died, and you said, "What do you remember about Juanita?" Well, I mean, the the women in the Reyes families, uh, Neftali and Juanita and Isadora and Sandra, they are just so strong. I mean, and so awesome. When she was born, she was also very unique, very pretty, very, 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 very pretty. But she had her own personality and all that as well. So I can say that um, when I uh, when I met her come into this world, that's when I saw her. Come, you know, after birth, I saw her, and of course, I I liked her like this. It's a sister. I had two boys. Yeah, there were two boys. This so was a girl. Oh, it's a girl. Being, being the oldest grandchild, I think I had more years or opportunities to know some of the older aunts and uncles. And so I did have some time with her and some memories um, that um, are impactful. Uh, I know going to visit her home, um, I liked that she, Aunt Juanita, was um, someone who cared a lot about animals and she had even birds that lived in her house. Um, so going to visit it was always kind of fun to see, you know, what what she did or how much she cared about even the animals and surrounding their home because they lived in a wooded area. She gave all her love to, to her husband and she gave love to animals. She was she loved animals. I like that about her. She would take a little bird and hold it in her hand. She would kiss it and and, and make sure that he ate, you know, that the bird that the bird was um, bad, and this is a bird that she will see a bird uh, not flying that she should be there. She had a bird that lived with her for uh, I think it was two or three years in her own house. The bird was flying. It was a uh, what kind of a bird was it? Um, a rabbit. It was a rabbit, and uh, and this rabbit lived uh, for two years with her. She treated like this. She, that's my kid. She has such a caring heart. Um, but what, what I saw also, on the flip side, is even though she had that, she was tough. She was a very tough woman, and even sometimes I felt like if something was funny or laughed about it, she would say, that's not funny. <laughs> and it would make me laugh more, but then she would laugh. I loved the way Juanita would speak to, to me and the way she would speak to everybody, and how she would speak so sternly, and she would always she would have a smile when she started to when she when she knew she was being hard you know she could and she knew she was being hard but it was never as though i felt bad it was just that um she was just saying it in a way to let you know that she's serious and she cared so deeply about the people that she worked with too um having bible stories and meetings with them because she really cared about people in the Lord. And so I'll, I'll always remember that, those things about her. Juanita, yeah, my, my beautiful sister Juanita. She always, she, every time she saw me, she would get to my hair. In her hair, cut, in her hair, cut your hair. It was almost simple, like she always wanted to remember that, Natalie. 
And so she practiced with us cutting her hair. She went to school. Uh, she became, uh, she had a, a, a beauty, a, how did I, a, a beauty salon um, career. She went, she had her own business. And uh, she finally, uh, she got married. And basically she moved to Madison, to Wisconsin there, and she lived with her husband there. Juanita was one of the persons who went on her own, but she always, not went on her own, but started her own lifestyle. She will always say to us, to sacrifice, sacrifice. You gotta sacrifice. I don't know how that came about. You gotta get ahead in life and you gotta sacrifice. She was this fighter. She was one that stood up and, and fought for the corruptness that was going on. And so they named the shirt after her. I am Juana Gallo, that was the star in the show. And this was when she was battling cancer. She, she certainly was a fighter. She fought for so long not to let this take her. And so I, I saved this shirt and I wore it a few times. Um, just, I think, yeah, it just, what she looked like. Mm -hmm. uh, the last days of her life for Juanita is, uh, it was very challenging for all of us. I remember when my brother would go visit Juanita in Madison, Wisconsin. And her last days was she couldn't uh, she couldn't talk to us, but she always tried to talk to us. Um, one of the things I've realized uh, in my life is that I'm going to be at a lot of funerals. Right, and I'm going to be, ha and every person creates a disaster in their life that that is going to happen. But I believe that all of us know that. So we're with the expectation of all this pain and all this pain that's coming. What makes a family good is the sticking together. Okay, you always have to have your back. No each other's back and and it has to happen in sickness and in health if we're richer or if we're poor till death do us part i know it's a great family and it might be the greatest family ever created we miss her she got she contracted cancer and uh she battled with cancer and um she did everything she she could do what she wanted to do to to battle the cancer and but but the Lord called her, and uh, so she's in heaven. Adios amigos, compañeros de la escuela, mis compañeros de aquellos tiempos. A mí me toca hoy dar la retirada, la retirada a mi buena muchachada. Excellent.